Welcome to the Dr. Me First podcast with me, your colleague in medicine and coach in life, Dr. Erin Wiseman. Hey, all my friends. Welcome back to Dr. Me First, a podcast all about authentic conversations between female physicians. This is a place where we are exploring our life and our practice, and we're trying to learn how to doctor ourselves first. Because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being a group of burned out, grumpy people. I want to embrace the joy of life. I want to love life. I want to move forward in joy. And so that's what this podcast is all about. Well, recently, I've had several people reach out to me. They've been listening to the podcast. They've been enjoying the conversations and the solo cast. And they're like, Erin, what's this life coaching stuff? And tell me more about it. So that got me thinking. Like, I need to show my audience what life coaching is. So I got a couple of volunteers, fellow female physicians, who were like, yeah, I'll get coached by you, Erin. And sure, we can record it and then put it on your podcast. So these are the conversations that I'm having. This first guest is Dr. Nilong Vias. She's one of my good friends. She was one of the first uh, interviews that I had for my podcast. We connected at the Women in White Coats conference. She's pretty much my BFF. I'm not going to lie. So I was super excited when she volunteered to come and do one of these interviews. And we're going to talk about her business. She is the CEO and founder of Sleepless and NOLA. It specifically works with pediatric patients and sleep and teaching their parents how to help them sleep. So We're going to jump into this coaching conversation. I want you to listen to it, enjoy it, and think about maybe a coaching conversation is a good idea for you. If so, go to the show notes. There's a link that says colleague to colleague calls. Get signed up, and I can't wait to talk to you. Okay, here we go. Well, it's good to see you. Yeah, it is. The Women in White Coat Conference, I still keep going back to it. I was like, God, that was such a fun time. I know we were together like maybe 20 hours tops. Yes, if that. I know. It was so fun, though. It was good. So, so fun. Well, good. Okay. All right. Have you done any coaching before? Is that no. Some, okay. So how I like to do coaching is because I'm a life coach, I don't really like narrow into like any specific niches. So I really like to people to come to me and like when we first start out say like what is your biggest challenge right now because usually you know we'll start with something but then it kind of trickles down into something deeper and that's the magic of the coaching like getting down into the deeper stuff so that's how we'll start is just kind of with those kind of questions okay the thing about coaching is it's not about me giving you answers because I truly believe your answers are within you. It's about me being more of like a mirror and reflecting things back to you. Okay, sounds good. So on your intro email, I just wrote down quickly kind of what you were thinking, and then you can go into it a little deeper, but you wrote that you are ready to move your Sleepless and NOLA business forward and to make more money, and you have a good idea how to do it, but you thought that maybe coaching could help a little bit more with that. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I'm a procrastinator. I have all these good ideas and then the implementation can get lost because I get lost in all my like, I don't know, what if this doesn't work or this may be too hard to set up or this is confusing or I don't know, you know, whatever. And so then it just gets left behind as a, as an idea. And so kind of finding a way to, and like I said in there, I think I know how to do it. And it's just a matter of like having the courage, like we talked about last time to, you know, make that next step. And I, I think actually yesterday, I don't know if it's because I had this call coming up or just yesterday, I was like, you know what, I'm going to pull the trigger. And, um, there is this, you've heard of teachable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, We can like download teaching yeah, so you can, that people access and they pay for exactly and um i've been wanting to create content for it because i think that would be a good way for me to promote the licensing side of the business 
um, and so that it's available for anybody to download at their leisure. But to create all that content seems so overwhelming. And Teachable has a summer course starting tomorrow or in a couple of days. And so I was like, unsure of whether to do it or not. And there's so many other platforms out there. And I was like, I need to research all the platforms and find the perfect one. And, you know, and I think I just said, you know what, instead of researching all the different platforms and then getting confused on all the pros and cons of one versus the other, I've heard of Teachable. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And I signed up for the, um, the summer like training session or whatever. So, and I think it forces you because you have these deadlines, like you have to get a certain number of videos done first, you know, throughout the course of the week or the month or whatever. And so it's a good, it's good for me to have that push that thing you're going to come up against and like, Oh, I got to get that done. Yeah. That's the only thing that gets me to do anything. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> good that you have awareness of it, <laughs> that you know, like, Hey, this is my motivator. This is my yeah. carrot that makes me do shit. Yeah. Deadlines. I've been that way since med school, you know, or since forever, like since, you know, I remember it, it even as far as like high school, um, like not getting it done until I absolutely had to. And I guess, you know, I know for myself when I have to pull the trigger and say, okay, I know it's going to take me when I'm down to the wire this much amount of time. And I just have to, I push it, push it, push it until it, you know, but then it's stressful. It's stressful on my body. It's stressful on my mind. I'm, I'm difficult to be around because I'm stressed. And, you know, that's what I want to, I want to take it in chunks when it, when I, I know my other side of my brain is saying, you should start this, you should start this. And the other side of my brain's like, Oh, we can push it a little longer. We can push it back a little longer, you know? So finding that balance. So it's not so crazy. Yes, I get it done, but I get it done wrapped up in a lot of stress and things. So that's what I'd like to, you know, kind of work on in that balance. I think that was really insightful what you said, like breaking it down into pieces, because I think that's exactly like you just said, the solution to your problem. Like when they say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> so it sounds like your first bite was like having the courage to be like, I know that I have this about myself that I need deadlines. So I'm going to sign up for this class. What would yeah. be another bite size piece that you think could help? I guess even within that, the three month class to break it up. And I think the class is going to do help break things up for me because they'll say, you know, this week we, this is the goal for this week. So I think the course will help me do that, but you know, breaking it up even within the weeks and saying, okay, I have this much time that I need to set aside to working on this project. Um, I get kind of caught up in, you know, things that distract me, like, even though I'm working on something, I'll be like, Oh, well, let me check this or let me check that, you know? And, and then time goes away. And then I'm like left with, Oh, I didn't get that done. And that feeling of like, un feeling unaccomplished, you mm -hmm. know, for the day or for the week or whatever. And then, which then adds stress, you know? So making sure that I, cause I'm really good at setting, telling myself what to do. But when that, item comes up to get done, I, I find excuses not to do it, you know? So mm -hmm. I guess for me, if I break it up into bite-sized piece, manageable bite-sized pieces, then saying, you know, this is manageable to do today or this week and just getting it done. And when that, when that, um, notification comes up on the calendar, you know, just doing it at that moment instead of making an excuse to find another time to do it. And then I always feel so much better once it's done. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And that like sense of accomplishment floods in. That's what I like yeah. too. Yes. That feels so good. But you know, you'd think that that feeling of accomplishment is so strong that you wouldn't, per I wouldn't procrastinate, but you know, I still do. It's not, it's not always the primary motivator. It's like the after effect. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I probably need to change. Say, look, I have this to look forward to the feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. Another thing that I have found just in my own life and working with other people is like putting the hard thing first and like just being like, okay, I'm going to tackle this right now. Then you don't have that like pushing up. So for instance, in my life, 
I, I hate housework. Like I hate, hate, hate housework. And I will like leave it to the end of the day. It's like 930. I've got like six baskets of laundry upstairs that I still haven't done. And I have really found that if I like get up in the morning and I like do the thing that's hardest, like I'm like, okay, you're going to do two baskets of laundry today. Like you said, breaking it in bite sized pieces, but also like front loading it. Then like the rest of the day, I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, I don't know. I, it's that mentality that's helped me. So I wonder how that could be adaptable in your own life. Yeah. And there are times that I've woken up before the rest of the household and I, you know, I'm like, oh, I should get up and sit on my computer and kind of knock out that stuff that I know is going to be on my head to get done later in the day. But I push that aside so often, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, I just don't feel like getting up or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. With I, you. What would be something maybe that you could like tweak or modify that seems like it would be more successful for you. Cause honestly, like getting up at 4 a.m. that is not successful for anybody. I don't care who you are. Like yeah. getting up earlier is not a solution. No, for me, even like, cause I wake up, like I'll just wake up at six or 6.30 and the kids aren't getting up till seven. Um, so I have that hour, hour and a half of, or a half hour or an hour of time. So I think, you know, if I have my computer, maybe what I'll do is, and I, this does happen sometimes, um, is just leave my laptop like by the bedside. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to get it done on my phone, which, you know, there's, a, there's some things you can, you know, quickly email or do on the phone, but sometimes you need like a computer. So um, forcing myself to kind of get that, instead of like getting up and going in to sit in the office and at the computer to turning that on or whatever. I think if I did that by the, um, you know, cause I'm lazy, <laughs> You're not lazy, you are not lazy. If it's right there, then it might make me, you know, do it a little, be more, be quicker to kind of say, all right, you know what? I only have a half an hour. I only have an hour. I'm going to go ahead and knock it out right now. Um, and get it off my head. Yeah. And it would, you know, cause weight, it's so weighing down, you know, it weighs you down. That feeling of, I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. And then I talk about it all day. I got to get this done. You know, I got to get this done. What are you going to be doing? To, I'm getting this thing done. And then it doesn't get done. And it's, you know, you know, that and then you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. That conversation in our head is so powerful. And one exercise that I have people do is like, when you start feeling that, like that conversation, you're always happening, like, oh, I got to do the thing, being a little schizophrenic and at, and like answering yourself back and being like, yeah, you really need to do the thing. Let's go do it right now together. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you're feeling so weighty and heavy because of the interplay that's happening in your mind. Yeah. And I, you know, come up with like things to do for myself that may not even be that important, but I put it on the task or the to-do list which sometimes I have to like go through that with a fine tooth comb and say, you know what, that's not really that important. You're putting that on there and you're prioritizing it, but it's not something that's important. This is important. And because it's hard and takes a lot more time, you're adding all these other little non-essential important things into the mix um, to kind of just delay from doing the hard thing that needs to be done. So just do the hard thing. And even if it means breaking that up into several days of work, just getting it done because it feels so much better once it's done. Yeah. You totally just described self-sabotage, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you do all the other things, when you're supposed to be doing the big thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like our brain wants to go into that mode. Like, oh, that's going to be hard. So let's distract ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So when you start going into that mode, what can you, what can you like internally say to yourself? Yeah, I feel like I tell my kid this all the time, I'm like, just get it done, because then you'll have a lot more time for the fun stuff. Like, get this heart, you know, get the homework done, get your practice done. And then you'll have like, hours of reading time, you know, instead of like trying to read in between, you know, getting your homework done, just focus set your time aside to get the homework done. And then you'll have that much more time to read. So for me, if I got it done, then I would have that much more time to kind of spend with the family or, you know, make dinner or do whatever other stuff or just sit around or watch a movie or read a book or, you know, something without that 
stress on my head of, you know, well, I can't enjoy this because I have this to get done, you know? Yeah. Then you like hang guilt on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I need to, and I, I keep telling him like, I know I have problems with procrastination. I want to make sure that you don't have those issues when you're older. So just get your work done, focus and get it done. So you have more, more time for the fun stuff later. So maybe I have to tell myself that too. <laughs> Do you make sure that you have fun stuff? Um, I'm sure I could have more fun stuff. I mean, I do. We, you know, living in New Orleans, there's a lot of fun stuff happening all the time. Sometimes there's too much fun stuff. <laughs> um, and you have to juggle between all the fun stuff. But some of that, you know, a lot of that stuff, like outdoor ex, um, extra stuff needs a lot more work. You know, like you, you can't, like to go to a show or a concert or something takes, you know, you have to buy the tickets, get friends to go with you. You know, it takes a lot of planning or whatever, but <clears throat> I'm sure I could find more fun stuff to do that's easy and quick, like just picking up a book or putting on a TV or I'm sure I could find more fun stuff to do. For well, I'm just, I'm just thinking as like, as you say that, cause I could see like, as you get things a little more streamlined and like you knock out your work, then making sure that you're adding in that fun because I know you and I know myself and we can be like super self-sacrificing, like beat the shit out of ourselves because we didn't get this done. And then we're like, no, we can't go out to eat because blah, blah, blah. And it's like, hell no. Like you did your work, go out to eat, have some fun. Yeah. Cause once the work gets done, there's always more work to be done. Right. Like exactly. it isn't like, okay, that's been checked off. So let me move on and, you know, say, okay, I'm done for the day. I'll be like, well, this still needs to get done. And still, so since I'm in the work mode, I'm just going to keep going. And then, you know, the uh, voice in your head is like, you should get up and take a break or get, get a drink of water. Or, no, no, I got to just get through it. You know, it's like all or nothing. Yeah. I know that's what we do in healthcare because I know, I know that's what we do in healthcare, but it's not, it's not sustainable. Yeah, I know. You're right. <laughs> so I'm wondering, just thinking about like reflecting back. So it sounds like you kind of know, like you want to grow the business and you feel like you have a good direction with it. And you've already started to do some good things to accomplish that with the teachable course. And then that will help get you your, your teachable course, like launching and ready to go. And then in the mix of that, um, it sounds like, you know, the kind of some of the undercurrents are like fighting kind of with like the schedule and the to-do list and balancing that with like the life and the fun side. Yeah. In a nutshell, that's it. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad I listened really well. You know, one thing that's really hard in entrepreneurial life, well, shit, in any professional life, is like holding business hours. You know what I mean? Like it's so yeah. easy to yes. like be like, oh, I need to get up early so I can get to the hospital or, okay, just one more patient call I'm going to get done. And but then you look up and realize it's like eight o'clock or like for me, like I start editing podcasts and then my kids are down here like, mom, we're hungry. And I'm like, oh my God, it's seven 30 and I haven't fed you guys. Like, do you have office hours that you keep for your business? I do. I mean, I, I have a set schedule when I um, do like my free consultations and then when I do my paid consultations and when I do like admin hours and you know, that sort of thing. And then, but I fit in all the, all the other stuff, you know, that pops up like when people come to the house to fix it or work on it or, you know, groceries or, you know, whatever other things get mixed into field the trips. hours or field trips or yeah whatever, all that gets just put into the admin hours, you know, because those, I block that out, like, you know, for the course of the day or whatever. And so it's like, it's not really admin, just admin hours, you know, it could be mixed in with my mom needs help with something. So I'm running over there because I know that that's not a time that I'm seeing patients mm -hmm. or talking to patients. So in that way, it's a schedule, but it's like, flexible. And that's kind of where, where I'm like, Oh, I do. I have a flexible schedule. I can schedule in anything whenever I want, but then it, it gets stressful because that day I may have had, you know, okay, I need to 
answer emails or work on sleep plans or you know work on this certain thing on these days and then if something gets added in then my work gets pushed aside and then you know then there comes the okay now i'm really on a deadline not because i i procrastinated by myself but because things got scheduled in that you know there's no other time for it so it had to be scheduled then and so then my work sort of gets pushed aside you know yeah and i think that probably happens more often than you know like you yeah. you, know, you said that you're lazy i don't think that you're lazy <laughs> i think you just you need that protective time to be creative and to be in your business and it's being infiltrated by other things yeah yeah, because I'm like, you know, well, since I have this more flexible schedule, that's when, when, when other things come up, I have to be free or available to schedule it, you know, you know, if it's, if it was a consult and one of those things happened, it would just be like, well, can't do it, you know, like it has to, it it's can't protected. do it this day, but with yeah. that administrative time, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, well, I can do it because I have this time, you know, and then you know, it's hard to say, okay, well, today will be the day that I just leave open for any of those things to happen because you never know when those things are going to happen, right? Yeah. So I just schedule it as administrative and then know that I, most of the time I'll be doing administrative stuff on those days, but if something does come in, then I'll, I'll just go with it. Maybe I should have some protected admin, administrative time that can't get nothing that nothing else can get scheduled within unless it's something for the kids when you say that out loud does that feel good um <laughs> i guess i'm like well what if it you know it's that for me i have a hard time like making um definitive things like what's the word like where it's you can't where it's concrete you know and nothing mm -hmm. can alter that because I feel like things do happen and you have to be flexible and let things kind of happen and get scheduled. But then in the, those scenarios, you know, then your stuff doesn't get done. And then, I, you know, my husband's like, well, sometimes you're doing stuff on weekends and, you know, it's like, well, I didn't get it done on the week during the week. Cause there was three field trips this week or three events at school or, you know, so I guess, you know, just figuring out how to prioritize things better. Well, and I'm even thinking as you're talking, like what pops into my head is as you're talking about, like, you, you know, the other things come up, but I almost feel like your business sometimes gets the back seat when really it needs the front seat sometimes. Yeah. And the only time it gets the front seat is when I have like a, a consultation scheduled, you know, with a client. Um, that's the only time it takes front and center and it's like I'm sorry you know I can't come to lunch with the girls you know because I have a consult um, but any other time um, is infiltrated easily so yeah and like I said I, I made office hours for myself but maybe those I need to at least set a few hours of that every week that can't get infiltrated just find another time you know, and I did, I did that with my workout, um, last year where I just started putting it on, you know, on mind body, you can put it on your calendar when you schedule a class and I just would do it for the whole week or the whole month. And then, um, it was just on there. It was on this calendar. And so when somebody said, Hey, can you do this? Or can you do that? It would be, well, I can't at this time, but I can't at this time because that's what was already scheduled. And so, um, Maybe yeah, because you I, said you're very good at that. Like when you have a schedule, like you keep your appointments. Like when yeah. somebody signs up, when you schedule something, like it happens. So I'm wondering yeah. about that. Like what would be, first of all, we need to find like a fun name for this, for this like protected admin time. You know what I call mine? What? Getting shit done time. <laughs> and I only yeah. schedule, honestly, like a few hours a week. But it, because it's such like a focus, concentrated, like deep time, like I don't think I could handle it, but I treat it just like consultations. Like the getting shit done time is like one hour. Do not come bother me unless you're bleeding or an appendage has fallen off type of thing. And I always usually try to do it while the kids are at school. So it's like super focused. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make a note of that. I need to 
myself to, yeah, because like I said, I have admin time scheduled, but it's not really scheduled because it's just, you know, if anything else comes up that's more interesting or just that seems like a higher priority, it just gets uh, taken up. And then the end of the week comes and I'm like, oh, I didn't really get any, you know, I didn't get to focus on this. And then I'm in, you know, I end up doing it late, late at night or um, that feels good. I can, uh, I can definitely do that. And then it's protected. It's just protected time. But, um, does it matter what the changes in schedule? Because sometimes my husband's like, oh, I'm off today. Let's go do this or that. And I'm like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is the beauty of this type of schedule in that right. it can be, you know, it is flexible in that way, but when the stuff doesn't get done, then it creates stress because I, I'm not going to leave it. You know, I'm not going to not get it done. Mm -hmm. Even if I took time out to do something fun, I'm not going to not get the work done. So um, then my sleep suffers or my, you know, uh, Your stress level suffers. goes up. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a good, that's a good thing for me. Awesome. Well, one question I always ask everybody at the end of each time that we do a, a coaching call together, I always ask people like, what are you walking away from with this conversation? I'm walking away from um, this to, you know, put my, keep my business on the front, you know, burner. Um, not obviously all day, every day, because that's not healthy, but to set aside, like I have you know, like you said, we, I have consultation time set aside and that's special time. I have workout time sort of scheduled in and family time scheduled in. So I need to have this sort of admin time scheduled in because otherwise it gets stressful for me. So just creating a, um, a time for admin and a time for work and having set times because I do tend to follow schedules well. And so um, using what I am good at to work towards things that I have difficulties with. At this point, we ended our coaching, but I recorded a little bit longer. And so I'd like to share these insights with you that Dr. V.S. and I had after her quote unquote formal coaching time. Actually, I think the coaching spilled on a little bit longer. So listen to these great insights now. Yes, it's just, you know, sometimes just having, it's like therapy for your business, you know? It is. It's all the things that we sit at home and, or in our office and think about, but we don't say out loud. And then we say it out loud and we're like, hmm, is that really how I think? And then you get to like chew on it together with another person and kind of process through it. Because like I even caught you like when you said, well, I'm just lazy. And I'm like, I know you're not lazy. I know you've got your kids and your parents and your business and everything going on. I don't, that's not it. And so that's where coaching's really good because you like get that out and then you have somebody like call you on your bullshit and then you're like, you're right. I'm not lazy. Like there's something else going on with the situation. Yeah, but you're right. It, it is good to kind of bounce an idea off and have a new perspective and have somebody hear you in a different way than you hear yourself than that internal chatter. You know? Yeah. And the cool thing is like when you continue to meet what I really love being the coach is then I get to keep reminding you of your progress. I'm like, Hey, you remember like back like three months ago, this was an issue. And now today you're like, good. That's what I think is really, really fun to have somebody kind of on your side because so many times we like do things and they're like, Oh, yep. I was awesome. Put it on the shelf. And like, we're on to the next problem instead of like celebrating that, like just with you. And I see in your business with sleepless and Nola, I'm like, it's just so amazing. I, I love where you've grown it. And I always look at your little reviews on your website with people who've worked with you. And I'm like, God, she is like curing the world one night of sleep. Everyone. So good. That's good. It feels good. And, you know, I, I thought since that, the Women in White Coats conference, I've been thinking about that whole imposter syndrome. And it, I didn't know what it was before that weekend. And, uh -huh. you know, like it's, it's a, a real thing. And I think about that all the time and, you know, saying, no, I do belong where I am and I, um, I am doing good for people. And it's just, you know, I got to keep, keep working cause it's working. It's just, you know, um, 
when it's your own business, it's a lot more difficult than if you're working for somebody. Oh yeah. Because you are your hardest boss. I mean, you're the employee and the boss. It's the, it's like the joys, but it's also the downfalls of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Now when I get, when I, you know, I'm like, Oh, I get an email saying so-and-so is paid for whatever. It's like, okay, what next? You know, like, yeah. Who else? What more? You know, it's uh -huh. kind of gotten to that point a little bit, but, um, yes, I, I just should stop and celebrate and be, be grateful, especially when I get the emails. I celebrate more when I get the emails, like, you know, the day after my consult, I always tell them like, email me and tell me how tonight goes based on what yeah. we talked about, you know? And when I get that email, like, oh my God, it worked. She only woke up once. And it was just that one, you know, like we had the consult <laughs> at, you know, that ended at 6 PM potentially. And then they had the night and then, uh, the next morning or the afternoon, they're emailing me that, you know, she only woke up once and she's used to waking up six times and, you know, oh my God. And that's when I, I feel like I celebrate that more. Good. And you should celebrate that. That's like your art yeah. in action. Yes. Yes. That, that feels really good. Here's another clip that I want to share from our after conversation. And the other thing I remind myself is like the question I ask myself, if nothing else can get done this week, what has to be done? Like what, what's bare minimum has to be done. And then I try to like get that knocked out first and then everything else I'm like, okay, that's just bonus. You know what I mean? And so since I've started using that question to like clarify, because like, for instance, I have all these post-it notes sitting here next to me, but as I look at them, I'm like, mm, they're not really important. You know what I mean? Like, what's the thing that has to be done this week? Well, what has to be done is I've got to check my emails and like follow up with people because that's super important. And I need to get podcasts ready for next week. And other than that, it's all like extra. And that's what I remind myself. And that, that's been really good to help clarify me because I feel like I get lost lost in the like whirlwind of a million things to do and my list gets longer and longer and longer like you were saying and like you build in all this more stuff I mean I was even getting to the point where I would be in the shower and I would like turn the shower off and like write my to-do list and get back in the shower and I've just learned I'm like if it's important you're gonna remember it again like it'll come up when you ask that question you know what really has to be done this week and since I've done that it's really helped with my anxiety level because I was like oh my god I'm not doing the things and I need to get the website updated and I need to write a blog and and when I started really being like no what really has to be done that's it just it's been life it's been business changing honestly as far as with that because then I don't get stuck in like trying to write a blog for three hours that then sucks and then I'm pissed because I wasted three hours well there you go folks that is as authentic and real as I could possibly get it's a great example of how I love coaching and about being on the other side of it, being coached in the insights that you can gain by just simply having a good old fun conversation that is forward focused and positive and hopefully inspiring into your life and to your practice. I know that I've talked with Dr. Vias and she's walked away with some insights. I hope that you have walked away with some insights in your life. And if you are interested in having a coaching conversation with me, go check out the show notes. I got the link. It's called Colleague to Colleague Calls. Um, just sign up for one. Find a time that works. If you work a little off cycle, if you're doing shift work, you don't find anything that really fits into your schedule, just shoot me an email and we'll get something set up. Because as I always tell you guys, and I truly believe it, your life, your calling, your pulse matters. Bye.